model steam engines top tip time part 58 a nice simple one all I'm doing is making a water fitting I needed a custom made fitting for a specific job on one of my steam plants this is a very simple job but you do need to know what you're doing there's a bit of turning threading and silver soldering in this episode on with the show how to make your own steam engine and water fittings as there are many commercially available steam engine and water pipe fittings out there, why do I need to make my own? Well, I want to make a tea piece and at the moment I'm thinking about sewing up this water pump casting. Because the tea piece that I need to make needs to have two male threads on it and one female. I bought this casting from Blackgates Engineering and it was about the nearest we could get. I have a recommendation. If you're going to make your own steam fittings, make them out of phosphor bronze not out of brass. In a steam boiler application you can get problems with brass fittings. It's something to do with the zinc content of the brass and over time they can become brittle and I've actually seen this on very old steam engines. And if you've been watching what's happening on screen I'm turning down the phosphor bronze to half an inch in diameter. And in case you may be thinking well why not use a piece of phosphor bronze that is just half an inch in diameter to start with well, I haven't got any of that. No, that's a lie. I do have a long stick of half inch diameter phosphor bronze. But I didn't want to break into that because this piece is just the right length. It's really not much more than a chucking piece. Plus, I suppose it gives me the opportunity to show beginners turning operations in a lathe. After I'd turned one end of the piece of phosphor bronze, I put it in the chuck the other way round and turned off the larger diameter from the other end and this is not a good practice at all, because it's not going to be 100% true. But trying to keep it real at all times, this is only a water pipe fitting. It is not apart from a steam turbine or a rocket or a satellite. And then after centre drilling it like this, I use a twist drill to enlarge the hole. And I'm using a twist drill which is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And as a general rule, I always use two imperial drill sizes down as tapping size drills for ME type threads. And if you don't know what they are, ME stands for Model Engineering. There are certain thread forms that are generally used in model engineering applications and they got christened ME a long time ago. I started off the threading operation by hand, but to speed up the job I engaged back gear in the lathe to slow it down and did the rest under power. Back gear is now disengaged and I'm parting off the component. The material that I'm using to make this fitting is called leaded phosphor bronze and it's really easy to machine. The darker red stuff is horrible to machine, try and avoid that. A quick health and safety warning. While the lathe is still revolving, I'm using a ruler to mark a line on the work a quarter of an inch in. This is a terrible idea. I'm not saying you should do it this way, this is how I did it, but I don't recommend it. It's best to stop the lathe and then measure the distance and mark it with a felt tip pen. Measure twice and cut once. I've stopped the lathe and I'm just checking that the distance that I'm cutting is a quarter of an inch, and it is. And in this next clip I'm stopping the lathe a lot because I'm using a micrometer. I would never use a micrometer on anything that is revolving. That really is just asking for trouble. And also, over time, it would wear the micrometer. This clip shows the end of the bar turned to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. Now I need to centre drill the part, but I have to be careful. I need to leave enough material around the edge of the centre hole to allow the thread to be cut on it. I'm not using a tailstock die holder for this, I'm using a standard die holder, but I'm using the tailstock chuck to make sure that the die is square to the work. And here's the finished 3 8 by 32 threads per inch thread, and when I screw a union nut on it, it's perfect. I didn't bother showing the threading of the other end because the process is absolutely identical to what you've just seen. Now I need to machine the end of the part of this fitting that's going to hold the water tap, and for this I'm using my rotary table that I bought recently. It's mounted on its side and I'm rotating it so that the open jaws are at the top. That's so that the chuck does not collide with the jaws. And while on the subject of chucks, yes I know I should be using a milling chuck, but I use this one because it never drops cutters. 
When I looked in my box of assorted end mills, I didn't have one that was half an inch in diameter, but I found a metric one that was nearly half an inch, but I had to move it from side to side a bit. All will be well once it's silver soldered, and talking about silver soldering, here we go. As usual, I'm applying far too much silver solder. Old habits die hard. After the silver soldering, I left the part until it had cooled to black, and then I quenched it in some water to remove some of the scale. It's fairly important to drill the hole down through the centre of the top of this fitting into the main union, and by doing that, water will come out of the tap when it's opened. Normally, I would have put this part in the acid bath, but to speed it up, I'm just cleaning it up using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a flapper wheel. And it's a good idea really in this case because I'm going to paint this part so also the flapper wheel is keying the part for the paint. The water fitting is going to be used in the installation I've been working on recently. This is a 12 inch south of pump connected to my Castle Steam V6 boiler and the idea of this fitting is so I can run the pump without pumping water into the boiler. Sort of like a steam powered water feature and here it is in action. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.